Well, that's me and, and uh, running in. And, uh, we didn't have a name for the mit person no, in the middle. So I, I don't, don't know, know who he was. He was in our outfit, you know, but I, I, I can't tell you who he is. I, there's a lot of people I didn't know in there, so. This says empty ammunition boxes. Oh yeah, this is mortar, mortar shell boxes. The waste we see, mortars come in a, come in a box, you know, and mortar shells. So they uh, discard the bo uh, boxes, you know, and take the mortar shell out of there. So are those people sitting on top of the pile? Are they some of your guys from your? Yeah, they were in the mortar squad. I carried a lot of the mortar shells in, uh, on me, you know, apron in front and the back. Mm -hmm. And we had, I think it was four or uh, so mortar shells in each one. Okay, D this says that he was your barber. Oh yeah, that's a Swede. He's, uh, he used to and do our barbering on all, all the people. He cut everybody's hair? Yeah, including the officers. Uh, here's, a, here's a baker. He used to make cookies and, and everything for us. It says James Perkins on the back. He was a good guy to bake. Yeah. Okay, this is the, the Perkins guy again that did the baking. There yeah, there, there you see a bunch of his cookies he, or whatever he made anyway. Yeah, he's got a tray with cookies or buns or something yeah, on it. Yeah. And they called him what? Ma Perkins. Okay. Looks like these guys are doing laundry. Yeah, here, this is where we wash our jeans and stuff for the scrub brush. Did you wash your own? Oh yeah. Did, not, so, nobody washed them for you. No, no, we had to do it ourselves. Okay, this has, it's the one with the barbed wire fence and some guys sitting behind there. That's, uh, that's uh, where we put the prisoners when they got them. We were in barbed bar, bar wire fence. We moved them, you know, after we had them for a while, but to start up with, we had to put them someplace. Okay, this is the three guys that have a crocodile tied up. Yeah, well, he was found in our foxhole one morning. Was he in there with somebody? I don't, I don't <laughs> know there wasn't mine, but. Okay, and that's in your tent. Yeah, that's me sitting in my bunk. So what a, what else you got there with you? It, That's a, you had just like just like a cot a cot with a canvas. Yeah, that's a folding cot, you know. You, you fold that up and and when when we moved. So what's there is about all you had. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's a foxhole, it says. Yeah, this is, this is what we, we s slept in and guarded. You had a tent over it? Yeah, once in a while we had a tent over it, but that's it. if we were in a, a place where we stayed a while, then we put up something so we had to cover. Had to stand in chow line, you know. It has some names on the back. Yeah, well. Um, Kurz, um, Maurice, Reddig, and Klug. They were the ones who were uh, dishing it up. Oh, okay, so they worked there in the... Yeah, they, they, they had to be somebody dishing it up, you know. Yeah. Rince, Fisher, and Rivingen. Okay, you said the Fisher guy in the middle was second in command? He was the one that took over my gun <coughs> when I got hit. Okay. That's a, he wasn't, he wasn't in any, any command, but he was my, uh, my 
the backup for you? Yeah, my gunner mm -hmm. had, had to take over my gun when I and when I uh, got hit, she then he had, had to take that gun. Was that the Browning automatic rifle, or was that a bigger gun? No, that was a Browning automatic gun. That's a gun that would shoot 20, 10 rounds in a few seconds. Mm -hmm. So kind of a, uh, might say it's a little small machine gun. I carried it, it weighed 22 pounds, and I had to carry that all the time. And so that was the gun that he took over when, when you got that's hit? That's the gun he took over when I got hit. That is a whole group of, of men. Um, and it's, it's after two weeks of fighting in New Guinea. So Yeah, I think, they, I think they would come back from from a certain one and they all had whiskers and they looked pretty tough. <laughs> this is the three Norwegians, Orville Rudingen and um, Udegaard it says. Yeah. I was called Swede all the time, you know. Just because you were Norwegian, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I had blonde hair, you know. And <laughs> this is Stark. You said said he drove the jeep for the yeah, officers? Yeah, he, he drove the officers around. And there's a tank in the back there. That's our water tank that we had. We filled that canvas with water and then that, that's what we had for drinking. Of course, they put c c pills in there to better the water. So you wouldn't get sick? Yeah. And this looks like um, it's a troop train, you said. Yeah, that's where we we went went on pass to Melbourne, you know, on, on a troop train. So they moved a lot of people at one time. Well, if we wanted to go to town, you know, we had to. Oh. If like in the evening or on yeah, a weekend or something, yeah, you could yeah. take that train and go to town. Yeah, they, they come, we hooked to ride on the train. Did you get to do that very often? Oh, not too often. No. Um, this, this guy's in a foxhole, it looks like. Yeah, that's in, that's in a <coughs> foxhole we had, you know. We have to have a hole so we could get down if it started fire on us, you know. So did you have to dig a new foxhole very often, or you used the same? Well, all if the time? we if we moved, you know, we had to dig a foxhole to have to get below fire. And I don't know if I got a picture of this, but anyway, we uh, at first we flew over the old standing range. I don't know if you heard of that or not, but anyway. We flew over there, we went through a gap, we was up 10,000 feet, and uh, the mountains or the hills were 12,000 feet. So then when we got across then, see, it dropped over the treetops. My God, they went to buy in a hurry. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then he landed, they'd gotten a little uh, airstrip there, it was a C-47s, and uh, we didn't have no door on the plane or nothing. We just sat in there with our equipment and we got over there and we we uh, we got out as fast as we could and they, the plane took off right away because we didn't like want the jet planes to be thrown mortars at her, or gunfire at them. So, so what did you do when you got out of the plane? Well, we were hit for the jungle. And <laughs> then we... Uh, did everybody stay together then? Well, well, the whole outfit wasn't with, yeah, they come after, of course, you know, or you, ahead, I'm not a sure few, of that. But a few at a time. A few, I don't know how many was on the plane, but 
was a few men, and uh, they we uh, got in into the jungle, of course, and we regrouped again and got uh, together. And then the first night, we uh, we got in there, and of course we were green, and that uh, New Guinea was a, kind of a swampy land, you know. So uh, we dug a little trench about six inches deep to, to stay below and for a, a gunfire. And uh, in an hour that was full of water and we had to sleep in it. We slept in water and... <laughs> used your helmets for pillows? Used our helmets for a pillow and that was our bathroom and everything. So, and the helmet was pretty uh, important. Used for everything, huh? Yeah. Oh, this is um, crossing the crossing the river with the with your guns. Yeah. We we walked in water to our to our neck. We had a small guy, Skibo was his name, and he he would go under once in a while, so we had to help him. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I was in water up to here, and. That was... And could you swim? No, I, I can't swim anyway, so... But, yeah, here we come off a... Here we, we made a beach landing on a barge, and we uh, hit, a, hit a sandbar out there so we couldn't get, get any far, so we had to get out and walk in the water, ocean up to, the, to our until we got to the land, and uh, we lost one man there. He went under, I guess, and I don't know where he, we found him the next morning on the, on the beach. Okay, this is Moreki, Slaga, Mayberry. Uh, they're holding up some... Um, That's a Japanese flag. Oh, okay. So where did you get those flags then? Oh, from Japs that we killed, you know. You took them away from them? Well, of course, they, they were dead, so we just took a flag if you wanted it. I could tell you a pretty good one about one. Uh, two young, uh, small guys, they were always in the same foxhole together. So they... And one guy thought he heard something outside, so he got up and there was some Jap out there trying to pull a grenade out of a pin out of a grenade. And he got up with his tommy gun so he didn't get that pulled. So it was the last of him. It was kind of interesting, this thing on the back here, and there's a stamp on the back of this picture that says, Passed by Base Examiner. See, these pictures, I haven't taken these pictures. They, they took pictures. I don't know how they had their camera there, but uh, I had the camera over there too, but I, they said you got to send them home. So I sent mine home, and uh, somebody must have had it, had it to, I don't know, got it there some way. And I didn't... I followed rules, you know. Some guys didn't follow the rules. <laughs> but then somebody had to inspect those yeah. in order for you to be able to keep those pictures? Well, I suppose they probably did have to see the, what we did. We had, uh, he took, took a bunch of pictures and he, he just put the name on, on, on our folks. And, so they sent. Uh, he sent uh, them to your folks. Yeah, sent them home, see for us. Were there some rifles or carbines or submachine guns that were more liked than others? Well, the the Tommy guns, you know, they were they were light, you know, but the one I carried was twenty two pounds, and uh, that was a lot of stuff to carry around, and you couldn't, you never fired it from uh, the uh, you. You uh, just fired from the hip, you know, and you had to hold the gun down, or else you go up that like that, and they went off. See, they went off so fast that you had you had to watch it. 
And so, uh, I suppose the reason I got that darn thing was uh, I uh, was at the firing range in Camp Roberts and uh, I shot the whole center of the uh, target. target out with that Browning automatic. So I suppose that's why I got to carry the damn thing. <laughs> Not that I liked it, but, but it, I think it's Fritz. It's, it looks like they're stirring in a big pot. Um, you have a big pot on the ground? You're cooking something or? Well, see, we had the pots to wash our muskets. You had to dip them in the musket in the hot uh, boiling water when you got done eating. Oh. So, so disinfecting you know, and everything. You were saying one time that you, once in a while, you'd get wild hog because you'd, you'd shoot a wild hog. Oh yeah, there was wild pigs up there. <laughs> and the, the, them suckers, they, boy, they had teeth like a, like a razor knife on, t on top of their back. Yeah. And uh, I, I have heard, I, I'm just guessing on this, but they claim if you run under a horse, you would uh, rip their bottom all right open. Really? Wow. So they were. Not very nice. This is um, natives along a pillbox bombed on July 4th, 1944. They're just hiking through. What's this a one? pillbox? That Pillbox, that's, they called a bunker a pillbox too, and that we slept in, you know. They had many names. So these natives were just passing by? Yeah. Back to the pillboxes, when, did you make the pillboxes or did the Japanese make that pillbox? Oh, there wasn't a, they called it a pillbox. We were down and dug in, see. They call that a pillbox. Okay. But did you do that, or did the Japanese do it? Dig well, it out? we had to we had to get the low fire, you know. So you you dug those when you? We dug them so when we uh, if we uh, camped in an area, then we had to dig a hole. We uh, and by the way, we got we got cut off on uh, one platoon got cut off. Uh, from the rest of them for three days because uh, there was a Japanese machine gun along the this was this kuna grass it's, it's about six eight feet tall you know I don't know you probably have never seen that but anyway we uh, they were hiding in there they they had a pillbox up there and by the way, when we were going to go back over to the outfit, I, every time we threw up a shovel of dirt of machines, some machine gun blast come. So we better not stick our head above it. So they saw you doing it. Well, they saw the dirt, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I seen one, one plane, uh, Japanese plane shot down. That's the only one I seen, but it's a P-40. Come, come underneath him and up under, and boy, he blew up like a, and he went in the water. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's just last of him. Mm -hmm. We rode back, we rode across on the Queen Elizabeth, and that was the biggest ship in the world. It was 10,000 of us on there. And uh, when I come back from overseas, uh, we rode on a Liberty ship, and that's the slowest ship they made, I think. <laughs> Took a long time. You were anxious to get home. <laughs> That's why it seemed like so yeah, long. <laughs> I didn't get home. I I went back to the states. Of course, after I got I got the Purple Heart. So then I got we got home on the point system, and uh, uh, Purple Heart got a lot of points. Of course, so we uh, went back on the well. We, it was different ships too, it wasn't the Liberty ship all the way, but anyway, then we went into Mackinac Island. That, that you heard of that, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. 
anyway, we had to take a physical, you know, so we, we had to uh, go through the physical before we could go home. And uh, when I was in the line there, I was going to, and this one taking the blood, he said, you better let this guy go first. He said, he's going home. And there was a big guy in, in back of me, and he fell right on his face. He couldn't see to take to see to take the bloods out of your arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't like that, huh? How did you get your Purple Heart? Well, I got foot in my uh, hit in my leg, you know, in my foot. Mm -hmm. Right on the top and, of his foot. Uh, yeah. Okay. Any anybody that got hit and uh, get uh, get the Purple Heart, you know. Do you remember the circumstance exactly around your injury? How that happened? Well, I, we were uh, kind of, I can't tell you whether it was a shrapnel or, or a bullet. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they, the natives carried me back to the portable hospital and, uh, and they uh, operated on me with flashlights, took the bullet out or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. No lights up there, you know. Mm -hmm. Probably not much anesthetic either. <laughs> no. Well, I suppose they had some kind of a spray to put on, you know. I didn't feel it anyway. Then from there, where did you go? Then, then I went back to uh, Port Moresby, and then I rode a hospital ship to Australia. And uh, by the way, on the way, that hospital ship went back again, and I heard this, it was the Japanese, it was a Red Cross ship, you know, the, the Red Cross on it, and they weren't supposed to fire on them, you know, right. but the Japanese would do anything they got a hold of. So they, they, they I, I, this isn't for sure that I know, but anyway, they sunk the ship, and I heard there was only one nurse that got off alive. Hmm. So I could have sunk it when I went across too. But what battle was it in that you were wounded? Well, it was up in New Guinea anyway. Okay. That that was we made we made we made four beat landing in one uh, around around the outside of the island. That wasn't a very big island, you know. And they were dug in all over the place. It was one time they had, uh, they were on top of the hill, a uh, hill, and uh, we had the mortars down down below. And then uh, I had to bring a can of water up to them, on a five-gallon can of water. And this, uh, I don't know if you've seen these here things. For, I'm sure you've seen them with the water tanks on the jeeps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had one of them on my back and going up a bluff, and I, I had to hang on to the uh, brush to get up, and that was really steep. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, that five gallons of water <coughs> on the water on my back. <laughs> when when you were going through basic training, uh, did did you feel like? That was a good preparation for what you experienced later? Oh yeah, and uh, that's what they uh, trained us for, you know. Mm -hmm. But we, did they do a good job of training you, do you think? Well, I'll tell you one thing, we, we made 400 mile hikes anyway, so uh, we were in shape. Did you make it through all of those hikes? Oh yeah. I, well, we didn't make it 20 a uh, hundred miles a day, we went no. 25 miles a day. And but some guys didn't make it through? Oh, there was some guys that dropped out, of course. I dropped out only one one time. And then I got, uh, uh, my loins on here got to hurt too much, I had to, couldn't walk. So then they had a truck with, you know, so I rode the truck back. And by the way, they took that uh, truck up with a wedge 
up to up the hill because it was so steep they couldn't 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 drive it. Mm. And uh, they had to winch it down again too because it was just about I don't know how how steep it was, but it was really steep, you know. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't go up there with a jeep, and then the jeep would go practically any place. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the jeep up there they used to, they had uh, duels on all four wheels to stay on top of the was a swampy, you know. So they put duels all around the thing, mm -hmm. and that's what I rode back to to uh, the hospital or to. to the plane to go back to the States. Oh man, I mean not the States, but to, to uh, Port Moresby. Mm -hmm. You talked about being sick several times with malaria. Oh yeah, I had malaria six, seven times. I, I forget how many times I had it. But that, I never been as sick as I was for the second time I had malaria. Boy, I laid there for the 104 fever for four days. And that was really tough. Uh, I, I could have just as well died because uh, uh, the way I felt. You know, when you, you, you have a 104 fever, uh, st steady for four days, that's, that's pretty tough. Did a lot of people die of things not related to combat, like malaria or uh, oh, other diseases? I, I don't know how many died of malaria, but uh, you know, we used to take Adabrin as a yellow tablet, and we had take seven of them a week, one every day. And of course, what the, what they started to do, you know, they they wanted to go to the hospital, so they they uh, put them in their mouth, and then they walked away and they spit them out again. But then they finally started to watch and swallow them. So they, mm -hmm. you know, if you could go to the hospital, that was pretty nice compared to what they were. <laughs> you, you had mentioned in one of our interviews that um, some people resorted to hurting themselves to get out of combat. Oh yeah, I can tell you about one guy. He he took he took a axe and cut his hand off. There was a. That was the second time we were going back up to New Guinea, you know, and he couldn't take it, so he cut his hand off. Of course, what happened to him, he got dishonorable discharge, of course. So, mm -hmm. but it was, it was tougher the second time than the first time, you know. Did you have a feeling of that you were going to die at different times? Oh yeah, it was pretty pretty dark there sometimes. Was, your life wasn't worth much, but uh, I, I, God must have been with me up there to send me home again. But of course, when I after I come back to the states, I went to the uh, Texas to uh, the MPs for a while, and that was pretty nice. I, you told a story once about. Um, watching movies and the Japs were sitting there. Oh yeah, we used to watch movies, you know. Uh, I'd sit on the hill, you know, and have the cameras, and then uh, they said the Japs were watching movies with us, on back of us. <laughs> and we found one in our chow line one time, and he got to be a prisoner, of course. I don't know what happened to him, but... And why was he in the chow line? They were, star they were starving, you know. They they didn't have anything to eat, you know. So, but I didn't. Uh, the out I was in the outfit when I got shot, you know. And then, <coughs> then, then uh, after the, the outfit went to the Philippines, after they left me. Oh, after you went out home. Yeah. See, I. I got uh, a Purple Heart, so I had a lot of points, and uh, then I got to be going back, you know. Mm -hmm. And the others went to the Philippines. Yeah. <coughs> what about your friends, Deloitte and Rince and uh, Carl Tapp? They, did they go to the Philippines Yeah, then? yeah, they went, because I don't know about Rince. 
I didn't, he wasn't a, yeah, he was in our outfit, but I can't tell you what happened to him. He got home anyway. Hmm. Were there, when you were in New Guinea, were there um, American women in the military? Well. That were nurses and stuff? And not in New Guinea, no. They were in Australia. And so we went to, to Australia and then there was uh, American nurses. They were on ships or in hospitals, probably. Yeah, they were in, we took over to Gatton College in uh, Australia. And uh, that's where I was for, uh, for a while with my foot. See, up there it was a different fighting than, than the cross on the other side. Because, uh, see, we, we went out once in a while, just uh, six, eight, ten men in, uh, on a trail. And, uh, you know, in Europe, they, they, they had big time fighting there. But we, we went out as a squad and, uh, and hunted for them, yellow buggers. Mm -hmm. True. You had a story about going to a place to get water. Oh yeah, that was quite a story. Uh, see, we we come we, uh, we come to a Japanese kitchen, and the Japs had pulled out, of course. And of course, I we had to, uh, there was a stream going through there, and they had a ramp down there. The Japanese had a ramp going down to the water, so I went over there and took my canteen and filled that, and I went back again and. <laughs> And here, uh, the, the two other guys went over there, took a gun along, and, and they, they filled their canteens, and, and there was a guy playing possum there. And of course, he could have killed me like nothing, but uh, he let me go, and, 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 and they, they, they looked at him, and I guess uh, whether he, uh, I don't know how they found out he was playing dead, but anyway, he uh, he died there. So how did you feel after that? You felt pretty lucky that he didn't oh, get I, up. And... I was lucky. Uh, I must have had somebody looking after me. Yep, sure. There was lots of chances when you could have could have well, gotten yeah. killed. I could have, could have just as well not come home, but I'll tell you about one, one thing. Uh, uh, we were going through that trail and and there was some Japs on the side. Of course, when I carried that uh, Browning automatic, see, I got on the flank, so I, I had the firepower. And uh, then uh, there was a Japanese uh, hut over there. And uh, I had to throw a grenade over there, and I, uh, I did a pretty good job at landing in between the legs of the one guy. And, of course, I blew the whole shack down. Them uh, the grenades, they were powerful. I remember one time we were, we were, uh, at, at a dance, and I was dancing with a girl, she said, weren't you? Aren't you scared? Well, I said, what are you going to do? You got to be, got to go. That's all there's to it. So. Everybody was scared, I'm sure. Yeah. Did you ever use the telegraph to uh, contact your parents? Were you, did, did you have the option of using a telegraph? Or did they have telegraphs? No, no, we didn't. We didn't. Uh, only thing we, we made it for was the mailman. Mm -hmm. See, the that's the only thing we uh, got to go by was the mail. And that wasn't always so good either. It took a long time, I'm sure. Yeah. I remember one time they sent me, they sent me uh, a package of Lefsa. And when it got there, it was all moldy and everything. I couldn't eat it. And so were there any other Norwegians there? In the group, any other Oh Norwegian? yeah, there was some that could talk Norwegian, but we did, never got acquainted with them, you know. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, Deloitte was the main one, and Rins couldn't talk Norwegian. And, uh, Deloitte could? 
Deloitte y'all did. We had a guy, uh, his name was Seip, and he, uh, that was that when we got across on the, on the Kuna grass, we were shut off, and somewhere, the, I don't know, was after we'd come back, and he got a, he got a 50 caliber through his helmet and his head and the whole works. Mm. So that was the end of him. Mm. He was, said he was going to be a preacher when he got back. Mm. And he didn't get back. Yeah. Well, I can tell you one thing, it was no fun up there. Yeah. 